have to now try in very few minutes to give us the essence of the takeaways from these last three and a half days, the Copenhagen lessons. Take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, and first of all, a big thank you to everybody who has contributed with your knowledge in so many ways and also to all the staff that has made all this possible and helped us conduct it. When we share our knowledge, we learn. We learn by sharing our own knowledge because it helps us reflect, it helps us condense and formulate what, what we're working uh, is about. Then when we listen, we learn as well. We take home the experience um, and the knowledge that others have gathered for us. Hopefully, by sharing your knowledge, by formulating and sharing what you think about how architecture can contribute to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, and by listening to others, what they are working with, what they are bringing to the table, you have all learned something, are bringing home lessons from this Congress. From our side, from the uh, Congress side, we are trying, we have also tried to condense some of what we have learned in this seven-year journey uh, of producing this Congress. And we'll, I'll share that with you now, here, today. Um, first of all, dignity and agency for all people is fundamental in architecture. There is no beauty in exclusion. What, I, what you have... <laughs> What you have all shared and what is so fundamental is that we do not, we build for people. As Jan Giel has said, the mark of a truly good architect is a love for the people. We do not build for anything else. We do not build for institutions. We do not build uh, as symbols of, uh, of powers or, uh, or anything else we build for people. Um, number two. People at risk of being left behind must be accommodated first when we construct, plan and develop the built environment. <laughs> the UN often uh, talk about six uh, uh, things we must think about when we, when we uh, uh, consider who are at risk of being left behind. That's uh, based on poverty, gender, age, ethnicity, uh, uh, religion and ability, we must think first and foremost of people at risk of being left behind when we build. And what um, there are so many, uh, we have worked with Rambul and Henning Larsen, architects, to try to bring some of the data that show these problems to you. There's a lot more than what I can show today, and hopefully, you'll dive into that on a later occasion as we move forward with what we have learned at this Congress. But here is one. A heartbreaking uh, uh, piece of data that shows that if you have less access to education, you live a shorter life. Um, this next one shows that if what, and this is Danish numbers, if just 1% of persons with disabilities in Denmark moved into having ordinary jobs, the economic gain for society would be great. And the the gain in quality of life for the wonderful people who are left outside of being able to contribute would be even greater. Principle number three. Existing built structures must always be reused first. We have a lot of built mass. When you look uh, at the calculated lifespan of residential buildings, and calculated, remember that calculated, the technical lifespan is, is not the full actual lifespan, which can be much longer. But if you look just at the calculated lifespan of a residential building, we are likely to demolish it after about a bit more than half uh, of that time. That's not uh, the way to go forward. We must, when, when we solve, uh, when we build, when we construct, when we solve problems in the built environment, let's look at what we already have. Let's put it into use. 
to add to that other daunting statistic, the way we, the materials we use also have a shorter lifespan. So we are tearing down before the technical end of life of a building, but we are also building the materials that technically will live shorter. We have to turn that around. Principle number four. No new development must erase, erase green fields. We have built on so much of this planet. We have preciously little natural networks left. We should use the land we, have already, uh, we are already uh, occupying, use it better. And if we must develop on green fields, we should do it with the care and consideration that the students of the Great Green Wall competition showed. This is uh, the floor space demand of uh, different income levels. So anybody at the higher end of that income level needs to reconsider the kind of space we are taking up on this planet and how that is pushing um, ecosystems down. Number five. Natural ecosystems and food production must be sustained regardless of built context. Uh, biodiversity loss and ecosystem collapse is one of the biggest risks uh, to the planet. We have to do something about it. And when you look at this together with the fact that around 2.3 billion people have experienced moderately of uh, severe food insecurity, it is clear that we must think about natural uh, nature network and food production opportunities in all contexts, also in urban environments. <coughs> Number six, no virgin material must be used in construction when reuse is possible. We are simply running out of many uh, mineral materials. The demand for sand, is what you can see here, is skyrocketing and we are running out. And it's not just sand, it's many of those finite resources. Principle number seven. No waste must, must be produced, produced or left behind, behind in construction. The waste generation you see here, construction, uh, this is in the EU, is about 37.5%. Uh, That's a huge waste production. We can build better than that. We can do better than that. And we should really do zero waste when we build. Principle rule number eight. When sourcing materials for construction, local renewable materials come first. We have huge CO2 emissions from transportation. And transporting heavy materials around the world is adding to that. But even more uh, important is the carbon footprint of building materials. If we go from aluminium to flattened bamboo, look at the difference of the environmental impact. Let's, as many speakers have, sh have shared all these days, let look, let's look at local materials. Let's look what's possible and available and so that we can also uh, gener generate uh, local livelihoods and local skills. Principle uh, number nine, in everything we build, carbon capture must exceed carbon footprint. And as you saw before, that is possible with the right choice of materials. This is showing you, and I think you all have seen these data before and know, uh, the global CO2 emissions are very, very high. They're getting higher all the time it's breaking the planet. We need to change that and we need to change that in every product we conduct. And then finally, principle number 10. When developing, planning and constructing the building model, every, every activity must have a positive impact on water ecosystems and clean water supply. Only 40% of, of uh, surface water bodies are standing in good ecological stand, uh, status and only 35 in good chemical status. Water is key to the survival of the planet and we must think about um, our water ecosystems when we build. As, as I've also heard mentioned several places, water, the scarcity, all the flooding is 
felt everywhere. Let's integrate how we think about water much more in architecture and to build environment as we go forward. Here in these days together where we have learned from each other and shared, I think I'm hopeful because there is, um, as, as have been said so many times, there are solutions, there are a new approach emerging so many places, from so many places, it's not coming from one place, it's coming from many places, it's coming from all of you. And it, um, it's going to change how we build and hopefully it, it will mean, have a lasting and important impact on how we can contribute to the sustainable development goals. There is no planet B and currently we, the resources we use are at least three, three times, times what the planet can carry. And just to mention, you mentioned Monday when we started out. Monday, when this Congress opened, was the hottest ever recorded, the hottest day on the planet ever recorded. That gives something to think about, and that we've been not just thinking about it, we've been sharing experiences, we've been sharing our know how, because we do not have all the solutions, we have many solutions. We do not have all the action, we need to scale it up, but we have a lot of actions. Let's take the inspiration, let's take each of us, take our lessons home from being together so that we can carry forward, use much less natural resources, but really uh, empower the human resources that you all represent. Thank you so much.